This is what you need to know while working in cybersecurity. In this video, we'll be discussing everything from zero days to open source security, as well as how to ensure that you're staying secure while working. Based on a recent article, the use of zero day and one day vulnerabilities has led to a 143% increase in total ransomware victims between Q1 of 2022 and Q1 of 2023. Zero day exploits are new vulnerabilities that are found in the wild that are being actively exploited by malicious attackers and they're one of the biggest risks for cybersecurity teams. And when you consider the time that it takes for an organization to be able to learn about a vulnerability, understanding the risk of that vulnerability and patching that vulnerability, depending on the organization that you work for, the time in between learning about this vulnerability and finding that you may be potentially impacted to the time it takes to remediate can sometimes take days to even weeks, depending on how complex your organization's infrastructure or network may be. This is also one of the big reasons why zero day exploits cost companies so much money because they are so time sensitive and may potentially have critical impact to business processes. Specifically, the report also found that ransomware groups increasingly target the unauthorized extraction or transfer of sensitive information information, which has become the primary source of extortion. Adversaries are also evolving their methods and techniques from phishing to put a greater emphasis on vulnerability abuse. Organizations with a reported revenue of more than $50 million were the most at risk of being targeted at 65%, and financial organizations saw a 50% increase in the total number of impacted organizations. So as you can see, zero-day exploits are becoming a bigger and bigger issue, especially for larger organizations. When it comes to ransomware and malicious organizations taking advantage of new vulnerabilities, this is especially alarming when you think about all of the applications that are now using code that is generated by AI using tools like Copilot, ChatGPT, and Bard, specifically because these tools are known to generate code that may potentially have vulnerabilities. As you probably already know, open source repositories can help you finish and scale projects faster than writing your own code from scratch. Open source development tooling continues to grow and draw the attention of malicious actors. And as we know with AI, if you aren't using a security tool alongside it, you could be letting vulnerabilities into your code. Based on Sneak's State of Open Source Security 2023 report, only 27% of organizations continuously audit code for vulnerabilities and 28% audit code daily. Continuous or high frequency audits can improve the security of apps due to the increasing number of zero day vulnerabilities. That's where our sponsor Sneak comes in. Sneak helps you stay secure while using open source, allowing you to scan, find, and fix your code with just a click. Sign up for Sneak for free using my link sneak.co slash with Sandra to see what vulnerabilities are hiding in your code, open source dependencies, and containers. Thank you to Sneak for sponsoring today's video. When you think about how many open source libraries, dependencies, and tools that companies are using that are open source, it can also give you an idea of the scope and scale of organizations that may be impacted if a vulnerability were to impact a popular third-party library or open source dependency. This may be an even bigger risk if a company or an application is using an open source library that is deprecated or no longer being updated and maintained, in which case if a zero-day exploit were to potentially impact or if it impacts older versions of that software, it can be tediously time consuming for companies to be able to remediate and patch that vulnerability. And oftentimes it's not as easy as just upgrading to the latest version, especially if companies are knowingly using an older version of an open source tool or library or even deprecated open source software because they may not have a better alternative or there may be some functionality in an older version of the library that is not supported in the newer version or if there was a major version update that would require an even bigger change on the company side or for the development team to be able to adapt to the newer version of the open source software. So there are a lot of reasons why it may not be the easiest first step for the company to just update to the newest version of a software or a library but the best ways to stay secure and ensure your organization has a lower risk on third-party dependencies is specifically only using the ones that are actively updated and patched, have a strong community, and are not deprecated or no longer being maintained. So with this, how do you keep up with cybersecurity news and trends? And what are the best resources out there? There are many different resources for cybersecurity news, alerting, and even through cybersecurity conferences. And a few examples include CISA, MITRE, and SANS Institute, as well as popular security news outlets and blogs, including Krebs on Security, Hacker News, Dark Reading, and CSO Online. Three of the most popular cybersecurity conferences include RSA, Black Hat, and DEF CON. These are great places to learn from other 
cybersecurity professionals and what they've seen in their line of work and whatever sectors that they're in, as well as live demos, hands-on labs, and the various different talks and sessions that are hosted during those conferences. Even if you're in your early career, I think attending a cybersecurity conference is a great way to network as well as learn the overall cybersecurity landscape of where the industry is trending, what is the latest and greatest, and learning about different vulnerabilities and ways that you can stay protected. Another part of this is, of course, patching and continuous monitoring. Depending on your organization, there are lots of different reasons why a company would choose manual patching over automated patching. This could be for resource allocation, it could be in case something breaks down, it could be if a server is housing really sensitive information that has zero tolerance for downtime, maybe there isn't a proper backup if that server or asset is down for patching. So in a perfect world, of course, automated patching is probably the easiest step to go. It is the least amount of work for the team and it will make their lives a whole lot easier because they're able to save time and effort from doing manual patches. However, it may not always be the solution that makes the most sense. Companies may also patch specifically for criticality. For example, if two servers have the same vulnerability, but one server has very sensitive information, has high traffic, while the other is rarely used, or maybe it doesn't have any sensitive information, maybe only one or two people have access to it, then it'll make more sense for the company to focus on patching the first asset, especially if the patching is manual and may require some kind of backup failover or any additional steps that may be needed to patch that specific asset. And based on my experience working on a cybersecurity team, when you're regularly getting vulnerability reports, CISA alerts, sometimes on a daily basis, especially if it's just a busy week for vulnerabilities, you may find yourself in this situation more often than you think when you may have to alert a team to one vulnerability over others, especially if teams are already busy and have their own ongoing critical projects. This is also a reminder that the cybersecurity team may not necessarily be the same team that updates and patches software or hardware. Usually there's some separation of duties for the cybersecurity team versus the IT team that may much more likely be applying those updates. And lastly, let's talk about the new vulnerabilities in emerging technologies. Emerging technologies and internet of things offer a wide range of benefits, but they can also introduce security risks. Attackers are constantly developing new exploits to target emerging technologies, and this also means that security researchers are working hard to keep up. The most common new vulnerabilities for emerging technologies include supply chain attacks, lack of security awareness, and insecure coding practices in areas that may not have a strong framework for secure coding, especially in newer areas of technology, for example, smart homes or smart vehicles. For IoT devices, these risks may include lack of encryption, insecure firmware, and weak default passwords that attackers can easily take advantage of. IoT devices often run on firmware that is not regularly updated, which can leave them susceptible to known vulnerabilities, as well as the fact that some IoT devices do not encrypt their data, so attackers can easily intercept and steal sensitive information or gain access or control of that IoT device. For smart homes and smart vehicles, the risks include remote access, where attackers can gain remote access to smart vehicles and homes through vulnerabilities in the device's software or firmware, which can allow them to control the devices, steal data, or even cause physical damage. This, along with denial of service attacks, where attackers can launch DDoS attacks against a home or a vehicle to make them unresponsive to the user, which could also disrupt critical services like power or electricity, water supply, or transportation. This is probably one of the scariest areas of security for emerging technologies that I think is going to need a lot more scrutiny and security research because there's so much risk attached to it. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about these topics and any other video topics they may want to see from me in the future. Hopefully that was helpful and give you a backdrop of what the overall cybersecurity landscape looks like today in terms of zero day vulnerabilities and emerging threats. And if you wanna find the vulnerabilities in your code, open source dependencies and containers, don't forget that you can sign up for Sneak for free using the link sneak.co slash with Sandra. Thank you again so much for watching. And if this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.